Thank you very much for being here, and thank you very much to Professor Kevin Personali for being here. Uh, everyone in the class knows each other personally. Kevin Personali is a professor at the University of Sao Paulo. Um, and uh, uh, we uh, know him because he was the president of the Hebrew Society, the Brazilian Hebrew Society. Um, he has a, a lot of publications, but what is interesting for us is uh, that um, he has a, a, a peculiar um, scientific formation, so to say. Uh, He's an expert on legal, but he is an expert on Jean Piaget, too. And um, he has a, a training in mathematics and physics. And so uh, I think that these uh, um, uh, multifaceted uh, uh, perspective, uh, uh, we can see this. Uh, Multifaceted perspective uh, in uh, his uh, uh, work uh, in his talk today. Uh, the title of the talk uh, he presented here he is presenting here is Claudia Silver today a neo Hegelian approach and the floor is yours. And thank you, Mark, for being here. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure and uh, honor to be here. Uh, I admire a lot uh, uh, the group uh, Hegel uh, PD, uh, and uh, I want to discuss some ideas with you uh, a long time, and now I can realize this dream. Uh, I decide to present uh, to you uh, an idea that I, I am thinking now, that uh, is use some uh, concepts to organize how we can organize this diversity of knowledge that uh, there is uh, to understand uh, our world. So uh, I will read my uh, talk uh, and we can discuss uh, the idea after. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will begin for the introduction. These papers aim to provide a set of concepts herein uh, referred as, uh, to as systematizing concepts, which allow us to deal systematically with the various kinds of specific knowledge in a unit. Consequently, they allow us to propose a concept of philosophy as a system today. They emerged from the necessity of understanding the world we live in, including ourselves. They result from studies performed over more than uh, 30 years related to he uh, Hegelian philosophy, the genetic epistemology of Jean Piaget and collaborators, uh, comparative epistemology of uh, Gilles Gaston Granger, uh, theory, uh, theories of system and self-organized system, particularly that of uh, Michel Debrun, physics, mathematics, and contemporary logic. Although such studies support then uh, the systematizing concepts, they will not be mentioned here because the intention here is to show that the systematizing concepts can be autonomously understood by themselves and their relationships. In the sense, they are self-supporting. In the end, uh, we, uh, it will be shown how such concepts support a speculative interpretation of Hegelian philosophy and their understanding can be seen as belonging to and organizing uh, the Hegelian philosophy itself. Uh, in this way, the systematizing concepts show us a, a possible way to continue developing philosophy as a system today, incorporating uh, both the main results of Hegelian philosophy, I hope, and uh, specific contemporary uh, knowledge. Okay, then I will present uh, the systematizing concepts. The first one is reality for each one of us. Seeking to understand the world, including ourselves, 
one can begin by asking what is necessary to understand someone's behavior. One's behavior depends on their fut futures and particularly it depends on what reality is for them. It may be said that each one of us lives in a different reality. For example, a religious person prays and an extremely unlikely event occurs, solving their problem. For this person, such an event was an act of God. On the other hand, for an, an atheist, it was only a coincidence or a consequence of a blind physical process not performed by God. What is reality for one is not reality for another and, and vice versa. People interpret events differently according to what they think reality is. That is according to what reality is for each of them. In this sense, the first systematizing concept here is reality for each one of us. In particular, uh, if we live with other people, you can see that they understand reality in their own and specific ways, different from our own. The second concept, one's philosophy. As mentioned, uh, one's behavior depends on what reality is for them. Consequently, to understand the behavior of a group of people, it is necessary to understand what reality is for each one in the group. Here, philosophy is develop, uh, developed to understand what reality is for us. Generally, the exposition of one's philosophy is the expression of what reality is for one. It most denotes here that one's philosophy is more than a system of assertions about what the world is. One's philosophy express, expresses what reality is for the one. In the end, the two concepts are connected and may be identified. One's philosophy is the reality of the one and reality for the one is one's philosophy. In the sense, what the great philosophers did was to express reality for themselves. Typically, we study a philosopher in the history of philosophy to understand what reality was for the philosopher. Therefore, the second systematizing concept is one's philosophy. It is the content and its possible expression of what rea uh, reality is for the one. Of course, the term philosophy may have a different meaning for other people. Uh, nonetheless, it is not contra uh, contra uh, contradictory to the meaning of philosophy adopted here. On the contrary, if one's philosophy is the reality for one, it's natural that in someone's reality, the term philosophy has a different meaning. Uh, the another concept, uh, philosopher. From the uh, hearing adopt the sense of philosophy, each one of us is a philosopher. Philosopher as an agent that makes and lives a philosophy is the third systematizing concept. It is a universal concept, uh, that is, everyone is a philosopher. Despite that, it is not useless because the philosophies uh, they make differ from each other. Particularly, to understand the behavior of a group of people, it is necessary to understand the philosophies of the members of the group. The next concept, degree of elaboration of a philosophy. An important difference between philosophies is their degrees of elaboration. The degree of elaboration of a philosophy is the uh, fourth systematizing concept here. The greater the set of questions and the range of response proposed by a philosophy, the greater the degree of elaboration of a philosophy. It takes a lot of work to de uh, develop a philosophy. 
many philosophies do not withstand a small series of opening questions. Usually, this is not the case with the philosophers studied in the history of philosophy. Their philosophies had a right degree of elaboration. Because of that, they have influenced history uh, with what reality is for them, as expressed by their philosophies. Next concept, system of all possible philosophies. Which philosophy is related to one another? Thus, more than a mere aggregate, the set of philosophies uh, constitutes a system. A system of philosophies in, uh, is constituted by philosophies and their relationship between them. In the sense, to understand a group of people, it is necessary to understand the system of their philosophies. For example, to adequately and accurately understand a part of history, it is necessary to understand the system of philosophies of which one of the historical actors involved. It is particularly clear if, in the end, one's philosophy is the reality for the one, and the reality for the one is one philosophy, one's philosophy. Returning to the main task here, to understand the world we live in, including ourselves, it must be noted that there are many different philosophies, present philosophies, past philosophies, historical ones, and possible fu uh, future philosophies. Therefore, to understand adequately and accurately the world in which we live, including ourselves, it is necessary to understand the system of all possible philosophies. Therefore, the system of all possible philosophies is the uh, 50 systematized concept. The system of all possible philosophies is constituted by all the possible philosophies and the relationship between them. Sen uh, next concept, scientific, uh, scientific philosophical illusion. Often people tend to uh, simply take reality as reality for themselves. It can be referred to as the scientific philosophical illusion. It consists uh, of sim uh, simply taking as true the scientific and philosophical knowledge that we currently have without uh, considering one. It is one of the possible philosophies in the system of all possible philosophies. And two, it is not the most accurate one. In the sense, the scientific philosophical illusion is the 60 systematizing concept. According to scientific philosophical illusion, reality for us now is just one possible reality among many others possible for us. It is not the most accurate and it can always be improved. Next, uh, next concept, self-consciousness. The seventh systematizing concept is self-consciousness. Uh, it is introduced by uh, taking into account the last consequence. The, self, uh, the term self-consciousness herein refers to human beings as a part of them are capable to recognizing that, one, reality is always reality for us, even here, and two, reality for us now is just one possible reality among uh, many others possible for us. It is not the most accurate one, and it can always be improved. Next concept, sorry for the so concentrated concepts, but uh, is, is what it is. Uh, think for us and think for itself. A self-consciousness, uh, we can re uh, ask a, a self Consciousness, we can recognize that the reality for ourselves now is our conscious now, and our conscious now is the reality for ourselves now. There are things that there are currently and actually in our consciousness. Uh, there are things that can possible be in our conscious. 
but may, uh, may not actually be. The first one uh, we hearing be referred as think for us, and the second as think for itself. Think for us and think for itself are respectively the eighth and ninth systematizing concepts. Uh, the think for us now is our understanding of the think provided by the current science and philosophy. The think in itself is the think considered as exist uh, existing by itself and in itself, in which one seeks to understand. Object. Reality is always reality for us. Particularly, the thinking itself is one of our concepts. As such, Things in themselves are elements of reality for us. The thing in itself indicates the goal of our process to understand. When trying to understand the thing in itself, which moment of the understanding appears uh, for us as the thing for us? In the end, to understanding of the thing in itself will be for us, the system of the various moments of, uh, as a think for us. That is the set of all moments of the think for us and the relationship between them. So the think in itself appears to us as uh, the system of uh, the various moments of the think for us. In the sense, the thing systematizing concept is object. The object is the thing in itself considered as the system of the various moments of the thing for us. It is introduced to indicate that a final identity of the thing in itself and the system of its various moments as a thing for us. The word object comes from the medieval Latin uh, word objectum formed by objectum, uh, of in the way of jacere uh, to through. It means then the thing uh, presented to the mind, to the conscious. Uh, it suggests a certain unsurmountable uh, dichotomy between subject on the one hand and object on the other hand. The concept object introduced here allow us to overcome such a subject-object dichotomy. Uh, this is because subject is taken as self-conscious that has the thing in itself as a possibility and object as the thing in itself is taken as the system of its various moments as the thing for us. It, uh, reconcilize uh, the thinking itself and the thing for us, object and subject. Next concept, system of self-consciousness. The uh, 12th systematizing concept is the system of self-consciousness. The system of self-consciousness is constituted by the self-consciousness and the relationship between them. It is the system of human beings, uh, human beings consider, uh, considered as a self consciousness that is as capable of recognizing that one, reality is always reality for us, uh, for one of us. Two, which one of us lives in their own reality for themselves? Three, reality for each one of us is just one possibility among others. For the momentary, uh, momentary reality for oneself is not the most accurate reality. And five, it can always be improved. Which human being is considered to be a philosopher that develops and lives in, within their philosophy? Their philosophies have different degrees of elaboration according to their set of questions and the range of response to them. In this sense, the system of self-consciousness and the other systematizing concepts, uh, concepts allow us to surmount the scientific philosophical illusion 
and to understand the behavior of a group of people, including them, uh, ourselves, as necessarily dependent on what reality is for each one in the group. The concepts of think for itself, thinking for us and object also allow us to deal with the various understanding of one thing. The object is the system um, of moments of the thing for us, including the moments of the thing for each philosophy. In this context, it's important to consider the system of all possible philosophies, which le uh, leads us to the next uh, systematizing concept, reason. In the world uh, in which we live, um, uh, there are various philosophies. Perhaps there are many philosophies as there are philosophers, or even more, because a philosopher can adopt uh, more than one philosophy in their life. The concept of system of philosophies allow us to deal with, uh, with such diversity of philosophies. Philosophies also talk about other philosophies. They are in a meta-philosophical contest. That is, in a contest that the philosophies can talk about all possible philosophies, including themselves. In particular, a philosophy may expose and explain another philosophy, especially exposing its reasons. In this case, reality for a philosophy that exposes and explains another is broader than that for this other one. The main aim here is, as pointed out, to understand the world we live in, including ourselves. This includes also understand philosophical diversity and its contents. The systematizing concepts allow us to deal with such diversity. Especially the philosophy exposed here aims to expose the broadest reality for us that can encompass all possible philosophies, all possible realities for one. If one's philosophy, uh, philosophy is the reality for one, then the system of all possible philosophies must contain all possible realities. This leads us to the 11th systematizing concept, that is reason with a capital R, as the broadest reality for us that can uh, encompass all possible philosophy, all possible reality for one. Note, uh, notes that in this sense, all that is reason, uh, reason, uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable is in the reason, and all in reason is reasonable. Reason is not taken here as a human ability, but as a kind of objective content possible for us. Some content of reason is reality for us and some is not. The systematizing concepts exposed here allow us to expose and deal with reason and its content, dealing with both the content that is reality for us now and what is only possible for us now. It can be said that reason is an ideal, but it is not a kind of ideal opposed to reality. On the contrary, it is an ideal that encompasses all reality for us in itself. As exposed, it is the broadest reality for us that can encompass all possible reality for one. Despite reason being an ideal and having a part that is not possible and not reality for us now, reason itself can be assumed to be for us here and now and in everywhere and in every time. It is actual and not only a possibility. This ideal and real reason contains in itself all our philosophies and all living realities experienced by us. In the end, reason may be thought of as a supreme self-consciousness state that contains and knows itself 
uh, and all the others. Spirit. The 13th and the ultimate systematizing concept is spirit. Spirit is self-conscious uh, conscious that is capable of recognizing reason and itself within reason. In the sense, we will are spirits. We all are spirits. The use of the concept of spirit here brings with it all the exposed systematizing concepts. In particular, when using it, human beings are thought as, as self-conscious uh, with a possible and real greater and supreme understanding, reason. In the end, reason itself may be thought of as spirit, the supreme spirit, as the supreme self-conscious that contains and knows itself and all others. In this case, it can be referred to as the absolute spirit. Uh, last concept, philosophy. Finally, the uh, 14th and last systematizing concept is philosophy with a capital P. Uh, designating a proper noun. Philosophy is the activity of elaborating a series of philosophies to seek to better and better expose reason. As considered here, reality for one is one's philosophy, and one's philosophy is the reality for the one, and everyone is a philosopher. Therefore, philosophy is an existing activity that is performed all the time by all human beings. It is necessary to understand the world in which we live, including yourselves. A philosophy may consciously take itself as philosophy with capital P, as proposed here and as is being done here. Conjointly, even philosophies that do not do it or are against do it can be considered as philosophy. Exposing reasonable contents, they are exposing parts of reason. Indeed, as previously mentioned, the object is the thing in itself as the system of the thing for us. In this case, reason is the object and the thing for itself that they are unconsciously exposing as reason for themselves. They expose the part which they understand of the broadest reality that can encompass all philosophies and all realities. In this sense, the reality for philosophies that see themselves as philosophy, with capital P, is broader than uh, the reality for the philosophies that do not it. Regarding how to incorporate a specific knowledge to philosophy as a system today, such knowledge can be seen as a kind of partial philosophy. It is one possibility in the system of philosophies and according to this uh, scientific philosophical illusion, not the ultimate or the most accurate one. It describes reality in a certain perspective that is one that can be understand, uh, understood within reason. As reality for a group of people that assumes that specific knowledge, their behavior can be understood from it and from other parts of their more complete philosophies. It is the same for other people and their specific knowledge. Their specific knowledge is part of their self-conscious in reason, the broadest, uh, the broadest, broadest reality for us that encompass all possible philosophy, all possible reality for us, and reason can be sought as the supreme, uh, supreme self-conscious, the absolute spirit. Consequently, the systematizing concept allow us to understand people as spirits in the world in which we live and to understand the current world, uh, 
as reason's manifestation. Reason as absolute spirit and we as spirit are the most real world in which we live. Philosophy is the activity of elaborating a series of philosophies that seek to better and better uh, expose reason, is the universal concept and activity, and allow us to develop philosophy as, the, uh, as a system today and always. Well, there's a second part, I will resume it. And uh comment some parts no uh, we have a second part which exposes the relationship between hegelian philosophy and the neo-hegelian approach here during the time a more succinct exposition will be made i will uh, resume most of the original tests sent uh, reading only some crucial parts uh, returning to the test and the start to read, uh, to read, we have Regalian philosophy and the uh, neo regalian approach here. As it can be seen from the previous exposition, systematizing concepts allow us to deal systematically with the various kind of specific knowledge in a unit and consequently allow us to develop philosophy as a system today. Moreover, it is now the intention to show here how the understanding of the systematizing con uh, concepts can support a speculative interpretation of Hegelian philosophy. Specifically, uh, firstly, uh, it was shown that, that systematizing concepts have logical conceptual autonomous interrelationship that can be understood by themselves and in this sense as self-supporting. Secondly, uh, now it is now uh, the intention to show how their understanding can be seen as belonging to and organizing a speculative interpretation of the Regalian philosophy itself, being an autonomous, uh, autonomous general conceptual basis of knowledge that also supports and incorporates a speculative interpretation of Hegelian philosophy. Uh, thus, in the text, uh, it is important that the systematizing concepts uh, were taken from our language in an analog analogous sense as Hegel did for some concept presented in the science of logic, as he confessed. Then uh, I read again, now, uh, now it is intended to show how the understanding of the systematizing concepts can be seen as belonging to and organizing a speculative interpretation of the Regalian philosophy itself. It will be done by showing that the understanding of each systematizing concept is explicitly or implicitly expressed in such interpretation of Hegelian work. Uh, in a part, uh, reality for each one of us, one's philosopher, uh, philosopher and degree of elaboration of philosophy. In this sec uh, section, uh, it, it is argued that for Hegel, the content of philosophy is the outer and inner world of conscience, and this content is also actuality, Wirklichkeit for that consciousness, uh, uh, as uh, quoted in Encyclopedia uh, pa Paragraph uh, 6. And it can be, uh, can be seen as what was referred as reality for the one. This is, uh, thus, it is appointed now how to understand the concepts of philosophy and degree of elaboration of a philosophy in this context. The system of philosophies, reason, and philosophy. I read, regarding the term system of philosophies, Hegel himself does not use it. For Hegel, which philosophy is a philosophical system, a hyperring term in his work? More than that, uh, I quote, philosophy itself is a system. Uh, such a system sublates and, in a certain sense, encompasses 
in itself all the possible other historical philosophical system consider it. Because for Hegel, there is only a unique philosophy and it's, it, it is a system he does not need and it is even an inconvenience to say system of philosophies in plural. Despite that, uh, it's argued that the concept of system of philosophies is com uh, com uh, compatible with Hegel's philosophy, and moreover, it is necessary to understand the behavior of a group of people and the world we live in. Finally, it is being shown that the systematizing concept of system of all possible philosophies can be considered as philosophical system, and the reality for this philosophical system is reason. That is the broadest reality for us that can encompass all possible philosophies and all possible reality for one. Uh, in this context, philosophy can be seen as the activity of elaborating a series of philosophies that seek to better and better expose reason. A list of a sentence from introduction to lecture on the history of philosophy is presented to illustrate such a way of interpreting Hegelian philosophy. It is also quoted the, uh, the paragraph in which, uh, which Hegel introduced the content of philosophy in the first edition of the Encyclopedia of Philosophical Concise in the base outlines. The first book, he, uh, where Hegel exposed the philosophical system as a whole. Uh, I quote, philosophy is here with taken to be the science of reason, insofar as reason becomes conscious of itself as all being. Uh, fine. Uh, the end, end of the quotation. In the section um, self-consciousness, scientific, uh, scientific philosophical illusion, system of self-consciousness and reason, uh, it is argued that both the systematizing concept of self-consciousness and the Hegelian ones imply one another. It is also shown that the understanding of the scientific philosophical illusion is present in Hegelian work. Finally, uh, it is argued that it's possible to interpret the term reason of Hegel's philosophy as a supreme and universal self-consciousness that encompass all possible philosophy and all possible reality for one, as proposed with the systematizing concept of reason. In the section, uh, think for itself, think for us and object, uh, it is related that Hegel, uh, I quote, thoughts are not merely our, our thoughts, but at the same time, the in itself of things and of the object world, the Gegenstandlichen, in general, uh, end the quote. Uh, it is argued that according to the systematizing concepts and to Hegel, the development of knowledge for us of a thing in itself makes explicit for us what the thing is implicitly for us in itself. Finally, it's, it is claimed that the systematizing concept of object is fully compatible with the concept of object in the exposition of the series of concepts of Hegel's philosophical system in the Encyclopedia of Philosophical Science in Basic Outlines. Spirit. The last section before conclusions. Finally, it's argued that it is necessary to see us human beings as spirit in the sense of a self-conscious within a supreme self-conscious reason, absolute spirit, that is the knowledge of all possible philosophy and all possible reality for one. Uh, it is claimed that also that such an understanding is fully compatible with a certain interpretation of Hegelian philosophy and the development of philosophy as a system today and always. 
And in the conclusions, uh, it is concluded that the, the set of systematizing concepts allow, allow us to deal systematically with the various kind of specific knowledge in a unit, including Hegelian philosophy. And consequently, uh, they allow us to propose a concept of philosophy as a system today. It is uh, highlighted that they are emerged from the necessity of understanding the world in which we live, including the various types of knowledge, philosophies, and the views of what reality is. Uh, here and uh, it seems an, an ambitious project. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now some uh, time to, to discuss it. Uh, um, I, I, I have a, a first question uh, uh, um, about the very beginning of your uh, text. Text or your talk, um, and when you speak about reality for each one of us, um, I, I have the impression that there is a sort of overlapping uh, between uh, um, the notion of reality and the notion of the interpretation of reality. Uh, I, I want to say that. Um, if there is something, uh, this something as, as such is not interpreted uh, in, in a certain way, it is something. It is the interpretation of the reality that is different from one another. But this doesn't mean that the uh, reality is different from one and another. Uh, I, I don't know if it is clear. Yes, it is very clear. Well, um, uh, first of all, uh, when we study the uh, genetic epistemology, uh, uh, we know that the, uh, the Barnett uh, child, uh, there is no conception of reality at all. Uh, they don't see chairs in uh, this room, for example, because they don't know what chair is. They don't sit in chair. They don't uh, move uh, it. So uh, every one of us was a child. And all that we are seeing now is our conscience mm -hmm. and a construction of us. Okay. And okay, but you say there is something that is the reality. What what reality is? The uh, the the idea here is the reality is reason. Mm -hmm. And when we take reason as what uh, we are seeing now, it is the scientific philosophical illusion. Uh, it is not the real uh, real reality. It is uh, the kind of we see the reality, the reality for us, for uh, for me, but not uh, uh, the reality in itself. Uh, when we uh, we talk with um, uh, we live with another uh, person, we if we start to ask him, what is the reality for you? What is the human being for you? What is the world? What is the life? We see that person has different uh, meaning. They, they live in their own reality. And we don't uh, uh, notice that. Uh, and this is what I, uh, this is uh, why I want to start the test for, uh, for this concept to emphasize that is like that. We are spirits, we are self-consciousness uh, 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 in relationship uh, one uh, another, and this is the reality. Uh, uh, your content, my content, uh, and our content that give the uh, evolution of the system of human beings, not other things. 
Okay, I understand the point. May I insist a little bit? Uh, okay. okay. But uh, uh, the, the example you gave, uh, a religious person prayed an extremely like a day course, and another one I think it is a coincidence. So, uh, uh, I, for example, I need now a coffee uh, and I pray for the coffee uh, and comes uh, the, the, the student okay. work uh, <laughs> coffee and uh, I can say uh, yeah, it will be a result of my prayer or uh, it is a coincidence. But uh, there is one people who comes with coffee and these uh, you can say, okay, it is uh, the result of your prayers, it is the coincidence, it is uh, the, the, that I am the, the master of the world. Uh, you, you can say oh, everything you, you want, but to this man, uh, someone with a cup of coffee. And, and this is not the product of my temptation. But there is a, a reason in the world, uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, with it only say the the cup of coffee is here. Uh, the, okay, but uh, what what was the reason it uh, uh, is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I doesn't contest this point. Uh, so uh, there, 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 there's part of reason that perhaps uh, there are more uh, uh, accordance that it's real. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and you talking about uh, some part of the reality there are more accordance. Uh, okay, the coffee is here, but for someone that don't know coffee, if it's possible in this uh, 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 global world that we live, uh, they say, what is it? Coffee. What is coffee? So for them, coffee is not there. I don't know if you understand what, what I try to say. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, interesting talk. Um, I just have some very broad questions about your uh, method you, um, you are proposing in your um, philosophical uh, enterprise. Um, I was asking myself um, to what extent the scientific philosophical illusion apply also to your own philosophical enterprise. Um, if I have understood you correctly, uh, you're saying um, philosophic, uh, scientific philosophical illusion apply to um, uh, so it it, um, uh, it allow us not to overlap between reality for us and reality in, uh, for itself and in itself. Uh, but I was asking myself if if the systematizing concept and the system of all possible philosophy itself uh, is this the most adequate way of thinking about the way in which all possible philosophy uh, do uh, relate uh, in which um, um, one another or is just one possible way of dealing with it. Uh, the Hegelian solution may be another meta uh, consideration about the way in which all possible philosophy uh, do relate one another. So I was asking myself um, uh, quite simply, how do um, the first level uh, all possible philosophy and this uh, such meta level, how do they relate to one another? And if this illusion may also be applied in a way also to this, to, to your philosophical enterprises, because it's a philosophical enterprises. And uh, a second question, if I uh, can, can ask you a clarification one. Uh, I was asking myself if your own definition of philosophy, so first level, not second level, first level is uh, maybe too general. Uh, I think that the second level, so this meta level, uh, so, so to speak, uh, is very inclusive, really inclusive. Uh, uh, maybe you are trying to be more inclusive uh, possible. Uh, just to uh, deal with all possible way of uh, thinking and dealing with uh, our reality, reality for uh, each of us, 
But I was asking myself if uh, this doesn't, in a way, blur the imagines, the definitions of love itself. Because if philosophy is every a set of questions and answers, and this pertains to rationality itself, maybe, or to all human enterprises. Religion also does that, art does that. Uh, every human activity, in a way, has to do with uh, responses and answer and problems um, in a very pragmatic way. It's a way of dealing with a reality. Mm -hmm. So I was asking myself, if, 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 could you maybe differentiate, if you have a kind of criterion to distinguish between philosophy, the philosophical enterprise at the first level, and all other human enterprises? Because uh, for instance, Hegel is um, seems to be more radical in distinguishing between philosophy and other human enterprises. We have this argument of shoemaker. Everyone as um, as a measure of the shoe, uh, the, the shoe because we all have feet. And um, but does that mean that we are able to shoemaker um, the same with supply to philosophy? Not just because we are rational agents, that doesn't apply for itself that we are already for. So, if you could maybe uh, elaborate some okay. on that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, I'm conscious that Hegel does uh, talk about philosophy like that. Uh, it's it's then the, the concept of uh, Hegel's philosophy. And uh, it is what uh, you say. Well, uh, excellent questions, uh, first, uh, uh, because uh, the idea is uh, when we work uh, on the things of the, uh, the world, we understand the world in some way, and such understanding is uh, uh, the philosophy of the ones. So uh, it is in this basic level uh, that I want to use the concept of philosophy. Uh, uh, but uh, there is a problem uh, that uh, everybody is a philosopher. No, because there are degree of it. So what differentiates one philosophy to uh, another is uh, 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 such a degree. Uh, so there are people that understand a little part of the world, perhaps uh, inadequate, uh, very inadequately, uh, like to think that uh, the earth is flat. But uh, there's some true in the sense that uh, the world of this uh, that person is flat because uh, they don't travel or something like that. And this is uh, uh, their philosophy. Uh, and there are other philosophies that understand the world, the earth, the universe, and the human beings cons uh, constructing their knowledge and uh, is, uh, has uh, a greater uh, degree of elaboration. And uh, even better, uh, it can explain the reality of uh, the another person. So uh, the reality for this philosophy is broader, uh, broader uh, bro uh, than the, the, that one. Um, uh, and uh, the, another question is, uh, if the scientific illusion don't uh, apply to the systematizing concept here, yes. I, 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 after I write it, I, I ask myself uh, it, uh, how, how it is. Well, uh, in this case, we are uh, assuming that reason is an infinite content. And when I talk about uh, uh, scientific philosophic illusion, in general, is a finite way to conceive the reality. And... Uh, uh, more than an infinite content, it is a content that uh, see that everyone has their own philosophy. Uh, in this sense, uh, it is not uh, a self, uh, uh, 
uh, scientific philosophy on illusion because uh, we understand that perhaps uh, we have to change something in our philosophy now, but not, not uh, such concepts, general concepts, because they are in center sense absolute, like, uh, for example, when Hegel uh, says that idea, um, the absolute is idea, and it is uh, absolute definition of the absolute. It's absolute because uh, uh, always uh, the absolute can be sought as idea. Uh, and always we can apply these concepts. My question is uh, it's related to uh, one of Julia's questions, uh, but I try to ask it anyway. Uh, it is about the, the system of all possible philosophy. Um, because um, given that we, you seem to recognize that uh, every thought about reality constitutes uh, a philosophy in a way, uh, how do we justify that um, uh, the claim that all possible philosophy constitutes a system? Uh, because uh, they they could contradict each other. They could claim to be false or to be real. Um, and second uh, question about this topic is that uh, from which point of view is the system systematization of what possible philosophy made? Because uh, it is from above, from uh, an abstract or neutral point of view, or uh, um, it is a a, a philosophy uh, which. Uh, in order to conceive reality, engulfs uh, the other philosophy, the other philosophies. Uh, in this case, however, uh, it would be uh, um, a single point of view, and so one philosophy uh, and the systematization could be made uh, therefore from different points of view. Uh, or uh, third case, uh, we should assume a. Uh, for example, a uh, historical progressive uh, perspective, uh, such as the Hegelian one, but in this case, uh, it would be a kind of uh, undermining of the, uh, the, the attempt to, to make it compatible with Hegel because it would be uh, the Hegelian perspective would be assumed at the beginning, so it would be not so. Uh, Thank you. Uh, excellent questions. Um, well, uh, about the, the 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 system of philosophy, it, it, the, uh, I argue uh, I uh, argue in a part that I did uh, I didn't read that uh, uh, a set of philosophy uh, has uh, the relationship between them. And that relation between philosophies is not in the philosophies of the system. So if you talk about the system of the philosophies, uh, you talk about the elements, the philosophies, and the relationship between them. So the system of philosophies is a philosophy. Okay, or there are uh, some uh, some concepts like the systematizing concept here that organizing the system of philosophies. Uh, but uh, the question you uh, you put remains. Uh, and when you have contract uh, two uh, contradictory philosophies, okay, if they talk about one object, not because uh, if it's contradictory, it's because they talk about one object. It is assumed that there is a philosophy that can understand the object and can understand the philosophy A and the philosophy B and explain why the philosophy B see, uh, sees that object like he, uh, they, they, uh, they see and why the philosophy B see that object as they see. Uh, it's assumed that there is such a philosophy that sublates the two points of view. 
because uh, reason reality is one and if we have two different points of view are in this case point of views uh, reality for each one that see uh, parts of that holy uh, reality okay uh, and uh, let's see um, uh, and the problem of uh, historical perspective that say that there is no absolute, for example, for me, it is a problem uh, how um, postmodern uh, postmodernians uh, deal with philosophy, uh, saying that there is no absolute philosophy. Well, and, and their philosophy are not absolute. So it's false. In they uh, uh, give um, um, uh, validation time for the other philosophies, but not for uh, themselves when uh, uh, their philosophies uh, does not apply. Uh, and I think that we, we have to assume that something is absolute and it is in, in this case, the absolute is reason in the sense of the reality that encompasses all uh, possible realities. Okay. Uh, it is online. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, no. Like, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like an old, old radio, but yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask my question from the back, back in time. Well, thanks, thanks for the talk. First of all, apologies for not being there. I could not be there in person, but, uh, and I read it, but I've read the text and I enjoyed it. I, I wanted to ask you two questions. The one goes in the same direction that the question Julia had asked, um, and it concerns radical disagreement and the way you understand radical disagreement in philosophy and how to settle radi radical disagreement in philosophy. It seems to me that the way you're presenting the issue, it's quite ironic in the sense. So you acknowledge that there can be disagreement among systems, but but in the sense, it seems to me that you're suggesting that contradictory and opposite philosophical systems can be brought into one perspective by taking a metaphilosophical stance. Uh, so I wanted to invite you to say something more about this perspective, how you understand it, and how you would object to the criticism that by doing so, you take a hegemonic, you, you make an hegemonic gesture of reducing opposite system to one main narrative or perspective. So how would you oppose this kind of criticism in case your view is open to that kind of criticism, basically? And, uh, and another question is more specific, still concerns radical disagreement. And I'm curious to know how you would respond to those who disagree in you in such a way that they deny one of your very assumption about what philosophy is, namely the initial one, that philosophy is reality for one, or philosophy has to do with reality. Uh, some people might disagree with this um, statement and, I don't know, assume another version or another idea of what philosophy is. So philosophy has not to do with reality. We could say it has to do with other things, concepts and conceptual problems. And we could be you could take a therapeutic stance or quietist stance about philosophy, um, taking it as a practice of dissolving problems, conceptual problems, and not solving them. And in that sense, it's, it has not directly to do with reality at, at all, in a sense. So this, this idea of philosophy as a therapy denies from the outset your assumption of what philosophy is. So how would you reconcile this sort of disagreement about philosophy within your perspective? Thanks. Thank you, Luca. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, I, I forgot to uh, talk about uh, the metaphilosophical contest, uh, con 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 contest, uh, con contest, uh, um, 
Well, first of all, I, I think that uh, philosoph uh, philosophy is in, uh, in a metaphilosophical context. Philosophy always talk about philosophies, and so uh, different. Uh, it's a auto referential context. Always, it uh, it it is the um, uh, hard problem to. Uh, uh, put philosophy in a logical system uh, because philosophy, uh, uh, the language of philosophy is self-referential and in general, it is a big problem for logical system, formal logical system. Uh, for example, uh, 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 Tarsk theorem uh, says that we, we can get a definition of uh, true uh, if the language it's not self-referential, uh, so uh, I, I I don't believe that, for example, uh, formal system can really uh, formalize philosophy, for example. So the contest uh, the contest of uh, philosophical system is metaphilosophical for me, uh, and uh, well. Uh, we, in this contest, uh, you say, okay, but there are other philosophers that don't agree with your uh, definition of philosophy. Well, uh, first of all, the intention here is to understand how we have a world uh, that I can have this conception of philosophy and the other persons that has other con uh, con conceptions and uh, this is real. The world is like that. And I need to understand such diversity, okay? Uh, and no problem if one uh, takes, uh, takes philosophy in another sense and another activity. And for me, what they do is philosophy because they are uh, ex explaining the world but it's a partial conception of philosophies because they don't want to explain the whole uh, and we need to understand the whole. Uh, and to understand the whole, to, to try to understand the whole is uh, the philosophy as the beginning of the philosophy, uh, philosophy is it. Uh, and no problem with uh, this other interpretation. It's only a partial interpretation of philosophies. Okay. I don't know if you are satis uh, satisfied with the answer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have another question. Uh, um, it has to do with the notion of reason. Um, so it, it is a point that uh, it, it is very interesting to me. I, I worked uh, about the same uh, notion here when we say that reason is not taken here as a human uh, ability, but as a kind of, of, of objective count and it's not possible to us. Um, there are more um, explanation of uh, uh, or justifications of these uh, objective content of reason. For example, there are some people who think that uh, the objectivity of reason is uh, um, a sort of consequence uh, of uh, uh, the English subjective dimension that uh, uh, more uh, subjective dimension that uh, are constructed, so to say, an objective uh, dimension. Do you think here, uh, as objective content, something similar to the inverse subjective uh, dimension, or something that is, uh, uh, um, in a certain sense, uh, stronger? than the, the, in the subjective dimension. 
I think that is stronger, but I think that the uh, intersubjective dimension is uh, an aspect of this stronger uh, entity. Uh, so when uh, they talk about reason like that, uh, they have reason in some way, but now in the complete way in the in the uh, and I think uh, we uh, reason uh, uh, sought as the supreme self consciousness. There is a, a pragmatical uh, interpretation of it because I try to understand the world. Uh, in the best way possible. And in the sense, I know that this is my knowledge about the world. So to uh, try to understand the world better and better means to understand, to, 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 um, to seek a state of consciousness that is the, the broadest one. And so uh, I try to reach reason. Even uh, I know I know that it's not possible to understand uh, every little thing. Uh, but uh, is this state of knowledge that I, I'm, I'm looking for? Even in um, natural science, for example, people try to understand the world, but uh, they try the, uh, to understand the reasons that uh, make the events uh, of the world. Where is that reason? It's not a reason, my reason or uh, a knowledge that someone has now is a knowledge that we seek. Well, then it's a knowledge that is a possibility and reality, actuality in the same time. Uh, so reason is composed by this kind of knowledge. In, in uh, answer to you, you use the, the, the notion of entity, uh, reason, entity. Uh, how do you understand the entity? Well, as an entity? Uh, I, I think that, uh, uh, well, I, I interpret the Hegelian philosophy, and, and I, I, I don't know if you agree with it, but I, I see the re, uh, Hegelian philosophy uh, starting from the, uh, the uh, trying to understand the world, the political world, the, the, the very faces of it. But in the end, uh, in the, uh, uh, the last definition of the absolute is uh, it as absolute spirit. And uh, he uh, argued that uh, uh, Christi uh, Christianity brings this idea for us. So there is a identification of absolute spirit and the uh, Christian God in, in, in a specific way uh, of the Lutheranism of Hegel. Uh, so, uh, but uh, the main thing is, uh, here is that we don't start with this concept. Uh, it is in the final, not, uh, not in the beginning. And, uh, and we, always try to understand the world. This is the most important thing. We are trying to understand the world. If there is a God, uh, it, it's perhaps uh, it's true, but it has to be the result of such a, um, re research. Okay. Yeah. Just ask a follow-up uh, to, to this question. Um, it would uh, just sound like a provocation. It's not. Um, is there the possibility to see a Kantian legacy in the way you are um, um, thinking about Buddhism? Um, uh, if we think about uh, Kant's uh, regulatory distance for the idea, it's something that we are promoting in a community, something that we are um, always engaging. And I was asking if there is maybe also a Kantian uh, way of considering it, which is maybe more useful than a Hegelian one, or just both of them? I think that Hegelian uh, philosophy has in itself all 
the old philosophies. So this kind uh, of C reason uh, that uh, Kant has, uh, it's true, but it's only a part of uh, reason is. Uh, uh, in the sense, it's uh, Kantian, neo-Kantian perhaps, uh, and also neoplatonic because this is the Plato idea and so on. Please. And also, uh, um, very brief question. Maybe not so brief, but okay, I will try to do a okay. very brief. Uh, first problem. of all, is, is, uh, I would say maybe a methodological question. Because uh, reading your your paper, I had the impression that you have the idea, so you define. You establish some, uh, um, you call them uh, systematical concepts. Systematizing concepts. Systematizing concepts, sorry. And then you try to show, well, we can find them uh, also in Hegel's philosophy. And therefore, we can talk about a neo Hegelian approach. Um, but uh, I wonder how you are establishing. So, what's your methodology, so to speak, in establishing this? Systematizing concept, is it like a, just a priori rational uh, 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 approach, uh, strategy, or it's uh, or you're finding them? I don't know, like in, uh, in our uh, uh, um, practices or our society, our culture, you're kind of like uh, uh, making uh, making them explicit. Uh, uh, by finding them in uh, in our uh, I don't know culture or uh, uh, whatever, so that's a first question. And uh, well, probably I will just repeat something that uh, especially Julia already said. But I kind of I'm not so sure about uh, if I'm trying to keep the Gaian picture in mind. Uh, I would say, and this is probably what Julia already said, uh, that. The idea that we are all somehow philosophers and we have philosophy, I would say that it's probably Hegel would call that or would talk about that more in terms of representations, meaning the this the idea that um, we are constantly dealing with the world and with ourselves and you know, material and social uh, environments and so on, in terms of thinking and uh, forms of thought and so on, it's probably more what Hegel calls representation. And then philosophy as such is more the, you know, the activity of translating uh, representations in concepts, which is something different from uh, just being in Thinking in, in, in uh, 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 or act in uh, based on thoughts and ideas and so on. So the idea that uh, we we all have a philosophy, uh, it applies somehow in our common sense. You know, my philosophy of life is you know be yourself or whatever. But uh, uh, I'm kind of skeptical in thinking that uh, this is what Hegel's notion of philosophy is about. Uh, this is more like uh, our, yeah, as I said, our representations of uh, the way life should be or the way it's, the world is and so on. I don't know if it's clear, but yes, I, I, I was, you know, I, I, I tried to stress, you know, this point yeah, because you know, I find it very interesting, of course, in getting myself, but still I'm kind of like, um, I don't feel so comfortable in your uh, definition of philosophy in okay. this level. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, mm, well, how I establish the scientific uh, systematizing concept? Uh, well, uh, historically, I I discover Hegel uh, when I is studying genetic epistemology of Piaget, and I. Uh, came from physics to the epistemology, uh, genetic epistemology. 
And for me, it's uh, in, in that time is uh, uh, was very strange to talk like things of the signification of Mona Lisa, for example. Signification of Madonna. Oh. Uh, and uh, how we can translate this idea in the physical world, the signification of the, this picture. And for me, it's impossible. And another thing is like a physicist, uh, uh, there is an um, uh, ex experiment we do with uh, children that you pick an object that is in interesting for uh, them and put it uh, under a cover and uh, they find the object and you, you in the front of them put in another cover but the children go uh, to the uh, old one and try to find the object in that old one. So the, the permanence of object is something that is constructed also. We, we don't have the, uh, the more than the conception. The, uh, the object for us uh, is something that, uh, are, uh, that are our, our conscience. And when I uh, discover Hegel philosophies, I see that we can uh, use uh, that idea that philosophy describes idea uh, in every time and every philosopher try to uh, describe an idea for Hegel and, and so on. And in the sense, uh, uh, in the end, I see that such concepts uh, can understand by themselves how, how, how I argue, but uh, uh, there is a history. But this is the contest, uh, con con contest of the discovery, not the contest of justification of this concept. Uh, and uh, well, representation. In general, uh, Regillian uh, uh, makes uh, at, um, uh, a big uh, space, uh, a big uh, bit, uh, between uh, representation and thought. And this kind of things is very related with uh, another. Uh, and concepts can uh, explain the truth of uh, representations uh, are representing. Uh, so uh, I, I think uh, in this case, a person has concept about uh, objects in the world and it is their philosophies. Uh, and for me, the, the, the case of it is um, kind of common sense of use of philosophy term, uh, uh, this is the, the one uh, pro uh, of this conception. That is something that, yes, it's, it's like uh, we understand the world, the, the, the common people understand the world. And uh, uh, if uh, we remember that for Hegel, uh, uh, truth uh, uh, is not the correspondence between our representation and the thing, but is the how the thing corresponds to its concept like a true state, for example, or a, a true uh, living being uh, with the state of health. Um, uh, one philosophy is more philosophical than other when uh, this philosopher recognized that uh, it is a philosophy and it's a comprehension of, of the world and uh, it's a con uh, conceptual uh, understanding of the world. So Hegel um, worked with this thought uh, of uh, philosophies uh, when uh, he discussed. But I don't think that uh, he will deny that uh, this is a, word, uh, a, a very bad philosophy, but it's a philosophy what someone uh, understand, uh, how someone understand reality. And more than that, we, we uh, nowadays want to um, deal with this diversity of, of people that are trying to say, well, I, I see reality in this sense. Okay, 
uh, I, I see uh, for me real, reality is it okay we have to give um uh chance to people uh, speak about what reality is for them in, in this case this concept of philosophy allow us to deal with it and with the uh, concept of uh, hegelian philosophy i think so thank you very much On one little thing, uh, uh, what about the critical dimension of philosophy in your perspective? Uh, the, the possibility to uh, criticize a, a certain uh, uh, mentality, a certain uh, way of thinking, a certain uh, assertion. Um, if I had the possibility to criticize, uh, this criticizing is the, in a certain sense, uh, the demonstration of uh, that uh, a certain assertion is not philosophical in this sense. Uh, uh, how, how do you see in your perspective this critical dimension? I think that we don't need to show that it is not a philosophy. We need to show that it's a very uh, close way to understand the world and uh, show that what such understanding don't can understand. Uh, uh, the critical uh, uh, aspect is that it's to show how uh, that conception is very is small, is very shorter. Show uh, I don't know. And, and for me, is it what Hegel does when he analyzes others' philosophies? Uh, he never. Uh, that will say uh, that it is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he say it is very, um, I forget the word, uh, close minded. Yes, for example. Yeah, uh, uh, I want to uh, make explicit uh, my difficulty to think uh, uh, as this point of view, for example, that every point of view is a slow. My difficulty is that I think that uh, uh, when one says um, this is my uh, philosophy or my point of view, and this is your point of view, uh, I think this is the negation, the negation of philosophical perspective. Yes, yes. As that if I say, okay, this is for you and this is for me. Uh, there is no more possibility to be to to, to go. Uh, yes, it, it's true. Work. But the negation is to uh, assert that this is for you and this is for me, and the, the, there is no possibility to uh, mm -hmm. see a broader reality than we are seeing. This is the negation of the philosophy. Yeah. And uh, okay, but it's but, true. Uh, but but uh, but, me. but it's true. There are persons that are uh, uh, like that, and we have to deal with it uh, in the system of philosophy, of, uh, system of view of uh, reality. Mm -hmm. And it's true. It's like that. There there are some philosophies that uh, believe in that. Uh, even today with the fake news uh, uh, and uh, to understand the reality we need to understand philosophy like that and to see that such philosophies are very close-minded very very uh, small uh, view of reality and to show why it's so uh, small uh, to combat uh, such such ways, not denying because we 
we deny uh, them, they deny us, and just very, very small question. Um, even in some sense, in this direction, even in your paper, there were always uh, written like us. And I was wondering who is this art? <laughs> like, is it the human beings? Is in this art, are there even not human beings? Are there animals? Are there, if of this, because if there's, is, if there is possible this very low level of philosophy, we can even think that even animals have, like, their, yeah. or, if, I, I'm asking, like, animals or other. I will put it in in the other way. Yes, but even plants, even plants react with the with the habitat in which they are. Like they, of they will not have representations, but they there's a way of like to 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 interact with what you are. It is a, maybe a very small level in comparison. I thinking about like no philosophy of art, but if it. Or there, there is something, and so I was wondering if in this as who is included. It's an excellent question, uh, and uh, if we really believe, and I believe uh, in the absolute idealism, the only substance is the idea or is the spirit. So uh, everything is philosophy. Uh, something has conscious, self-conscious, something not, uh, but we all live in the idea. The only problem I see in your answer now is if you believe. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true, it's true. But it's hard to prove. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much.